hydrozoic acid has the chemical formula HN3. Each nitrogen contributes five valence electrons. Since there are three nitrogen atoms, that gives us a total of 15 electrons, plus the hydrogen atom contributes one electron. So we have a 16 electron system. In many ways, we'll see that uh, hydrozoic acid bears a strong resemblance to carbon dioxide. One of the ways that we can satisfy the duet rule for hydrogen and the octet rule for nitrogen is to uh, link the three nitrogen atoms in a line, in a linear form, bound together by double bonds. So we notice that this nitrogen here has two, four, six, eight electrons. The central nitrogen has two, four, six, eight electrons. And the nitrogen to the right has two, four, six, eight electrons. We've color coded the electrons. We've alternated red and blue to highlight the fact that in any particular orbital, we can stick two electrons so long as they have opposite spins. So we can envision our color-coded system as having, for example, maybe the red electrons being the up spin, the plus one half, and the blue being the down spin, the minus one half spin. Hydrozoic acid has one acidic proton. If that proton leaves as H+, we are left with the azide ion N3 minus 1. Each nitrogen contributes 5 valence electrons, so there's a total of 15 valence electrons from the three nitrogen atoms, plus the overall ion has a minus 1 charge, which gives us a total of 16 electrons. So in this case, we can see even more clearly how azide and carbon dioxide are isoelectronic. But this is not the only possible resonance structure for the azide ion. In this second resonance structure, we have the same 16 electrons. We have the same linear arrangement of nitrogen atoms. But in this case, we have a triple bond between the leftmost nitrogens and then a single bond over here. So instead of having two double bonds, we have one single bond and one triple bond. We notice that this nitrogen has two, four, six, eight nitrogens, uh, electrons for that nitrogen. This nitrogen here has two, four, six, eight. So the octet rule is satisfied there. And for the last nitrogen on the right, two, four, six, eight. So we're able to satisfy the octet rule for all three nitrogen atoms with a different arrangement of electrons, a different resonance structure. And since we can draw more than one resonance structure, that tells us that none of the structures is the actual correct structure. The true structure is some sort of hybrid, an average, over all possible resonance structures. We won't construct it here, but we could just as well have put the triple bond between this nitrogen and that nitrogen. So we could switch the triple bonds and single bonds, keeping the atoms in the same exact positions, and we would have yet another valid resonance structure for the azide ion N3-1. If we replace one of the hydrogen atoms of ammonia with a methyl group, if we alkylate the ammonia, we end up with a compound methylamine, which has the chemical formula CH3NH2. The nitrogen contributes five valence electrons, the carbon atom contributes four, and each of the hydrogen atoms contributes one for a total of 14 electrons. And we can satisfy the duet rule for each hydrogen and satisfy the octet rules for carbon and nitrogen by attaching all of the atoms together by single bonds. And we notice that if we do this, we satisfy the rules and we have a lone pair left on nitrogen. We recall that for ammonia, nitrogen has a lone pair and it's this lone pair on nitrogen 
which is very often linked to the basicity of nitrogen compounds. And in fact, because of the electron releasing effects of the methyl group, methylamine is a stronger base than ammonia. If we continue to alkylate methylamine, we can add a second methyl group to yield the compound dimethylamine. We notice how the hydrogen that had formerly been attached to the nitrogen here has been replaced by a methyl group. Each nitrogen contributes five valence electrons. Each carbon contributes four. So that gives us a total of 13. Plus, we have a total of seven hydrogens. Each one contributes one electron to give us a total of 20 electrons for the entire molecule. And we notice that we can satisfy the duet rule for each of the hydrogens and the octet rule for carbon and nitrogen. And notice that we still have a lone pair on nitrogen. The electron releasing effect of two methyl groups is even greater than the effect for one methyl group. Therefore, dimethylamine is an even stronger base than methylamine is. Our next compound is called nitromethane. It's an analog of methane where we replaced one of the hydrogens with a nitro group. For this compound, each carbon contributes um, four valence electrons. The nitrogen contributes five. The two oxygens each contribute six. And each of the hydrogens contributes one. Therefore, for the entire compound, we have a total of 24 electrons. We notice that certain numbers of electrons, such as 16, 24, and 32, show up again and again. And once we are able to recognize those patterns, it makes it much, much easier to uh, come up with the Lewis structure. To satisfy the octet rule for all the atoms in the molecule, we need a nitrogen-oxygen double bond and a nitrogen-oxygen single bond in the same compound. So we notice uh, by looking at the gray shaded regions that we satisfied the octet rule for all of the hydrogens. We satisfied the octet rule for carbon, for nitrogen, the oxygen up here, two, four, six, eight, and for the oxygen down here, two, four, six, eight. I'll remind you again, we've noticed that one of the oxygens has a double bond and one of the oxygens has a single bond. There's nothing privileged about this particular oxygen atom. We could just as well have generated a similar structure with a double bond between nitrogen and this oxygen. So that shows, even though we're not going to build it here, that there is a second resonance structure for nitromethane. The last structure that we will look at in this video is diazomethane, CH2N2. The two nitrogens each contribute five valence electrons. Carbon contributes four, and each of the two hydrogens contributes one. So again, we have another 16 electron system, and we'll notice the resemblance of the main part of the chain, the part of the chain that involves heavy atoms, looks like carbon dioxide. In computational chemistry, we call any atom that is heavier than hydrogen a heavy element. So uh, carbon, nitrogen count as heavy atoms, hydrogen doesn't. We can satisfy the octet rule for carbon and nitrogen by linking them together in a linear fashion with double bonds and the two hydrogens are attached as usual by single bonds, thereby satisfying the duet rule for hydrogen. Diazomethane is an incredibly reactive compound, but it does uh, enjoy at least enough stability 
that we can isolate it and purify it. And this is the Lewis structure. We can also develop resonance structures for it, in which case we could uh, replace this double bond by a single bond, this double bond by a triple bond. Those are somewhat less likely because in those cases we would end up with a lone pair on carbon, which is not impossible, but we're more likely to have lone pairs on the more electronegative elements. So we're more likely to have lone pairs on nitrogen or oxygen typically than on carbon. I thank you very much for your attention. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Have a good one.